Okay, we're in the middle of Parak of Dalit. We're on page Lamid on the top, 102 at the bottom. And we're starting 11 lines from the bottom of the page. The last thing that the Rebbe was saying in Parak of Dalit was just like in Kedusha, you do a mitzvah, you bind, you bound, you bind yourself to the essence of Hashem. So it is an evil. A person does a sin, they are completely separating themselves, they're disengaging themselves completely from Hashem, completely separated. And he says, now the Rebbe started explaining, not only are you as bad as evil, you're worse than evil. Because evil is made to do evil, to be evil. A pig is trait. A pig was made by Hashem to be evil. When a pig is evil, it's doing what Hashem wants it to do. A person who had the ability to do good and instead chose evil, so that person is worse, Tal Rebbe was saying, that's what we left off, that it's even worse than the evil itself because he had the choice and he chose to do evil. So now 11 lines from the end of the page on page Lamed on top, 102 at the bottom. Therefore, Chazal tell us on the Pasuk, the Torah speaks about over there a Saita. A Saita is a woman whose husband warned her not to be alone with another man, and the woman didn't listen, and she anyway went to, pr- privately with this other man. There's no witnesses, guilty or not guilty. She came to the base of Migdash, they had special water with dirt mixed in. She drank the water. If she was innocent, she was blessed. If she was guilty, her stomach burst open, and so on. So the Pasik says, it was called a Saita. The Pasik says, the ishte. So on that Pasik, the Gemara says like this. What's the expression? Shaita. Sishta is it's in the Praetorian, it's with a sin. Shaita means mentally off. So he says, Okay, Ein Adam Ever Aveda. The Gemara says like this: A person does not transgress a sin, and the Dalit Rebbe doesn't quote the end of the Gemara. Elam ke nichnas beiroshdus. The only reason why a person sins is because a foolish spirit entered the person's mind. What does this mean? The Gemara says an animal. The, a normal health, normal animal doesn't jump into fire. An animal that jumps into fire is because it's a crazy animal. That's halacha, it's a crazy animal. The Gemara says a person by nature cannot sin. We have in the Shama, the body of the Jew is chosen by God to be a body of a Jew. How in the world can a person commit spiritual suicide? How could it be? How can you commit spiritual suicide? So the Gemara says, you're right. The only way a person could sin is because he gets a foolish spirit in his mind. What is the foolish spirit? And Dr. Rebbe is going to elaborate, but let me just begin with it. The foolish spirit is that I'm still connected. In legal terms, it would be called temporary insanity. In the legal system, you get out, you get off with it, by the way. If you can prove that at the time you killed somebody, you were temporarily insane, then you're insane, okay? The Gemara says, anytime a Jew sins, it's temporary insanity. Why? Because every sin, and this is what Dr. Rebbe is explaining until now and now, every sin is idol worshiping that we learned last week. God's presence is right right in front of you. God is present in front of you. In front of God's face, you're doing something in thought, speech, or action that Hashem said, don't do it. So what are you doing, basically? You're denying the entire existence of God. And therefore, it doesn't even matter which Aved it is. Every sin, we'll soon learn, is idol worshiping. Because bottom line is, when you do an Aveda, 
you're denying God's existence that he's in front of you because if you would realize God's watching you, you're not going to do it. So what's the temporary insanity? A person thinks, yes, I'm not doing what God wants me to do. I'm going against the will of Hashem. But I'm still a Jew. I'm still connected. I'm still connected. And now Trebbe is going to come and explain why you know you're not connected. What is he saying? He says like this. Even an adulterous woman, an adulterous woman, because that's what Satan is talking about. That her mind, she has a feeble mind. She would be able to overcome that adulterous relation. If it wouldn't be for the foolish spirit in her, that conceals and blocks, umaylem and covers over, as so ava mesuteres the hidden natural instinct of love, shebenafsho alikis which is in her godly soul, the dafka be bemunase Hashem to cling to Hashem emun and Hashem, viyichude vachto see in the oneness of Hashem. In other words, if this woman who's committing adultery would realize that she's not denying the entire connection with Hashem. She is cutting the, the lifeline between her and Hashem, or any Jew for that matter, between them and Hashem when they sin. They're actually cutting the lifeline. And, the, uh, and the, without this Ruach without this foolish spirit that they're still connected, they would never be able to sin. They would never be able to separate from the oneness of Hashem. Not to be separated from the oneness of Hashem. Because the same person, the same person, and this Dalt Rebbe explains is the Rosh Come to a person who doesn't keep Shabbos, God forbid, doesn't keep kosher. And you tell him, bow down to an idol. That Jew is willing to give up his life not to bow down to an idol. He will not bow down to the idol. Why? Because when it comes to bowing down to an idol, there's no more mistake. You can't have temporary insanity to have a mistaken thinking that I'm still connected. Idol worshiping is saying, I'm disconnected. I'm worshiping other gods. I'm not serving Hashem anymore. Every other Aveda, though, is a Rosh Tus. And therefore, the Rebbe is saying the mistake of this adulterous woman, why adultery she'll commit and Avedas are not, idol worshiping not, because this woman actually seriously believes that she's still connected. But it's not reality, it's not truth. It's false. You're not connected, you're disconnected. And he says, it would never enter her mind to bow down to an idol without even believing in it. Tell a Jew, bow down to an idol, but don't believe in it. No Jew is going to do that because they know bowing down to an idol, is that's it. It's over. The whole connection to Hashem is over. The Kosh can't say how much more so. To conquer the Yetzir. And the temptation of adultery is much easier than getting killed. In other words, for idol worshiping, they're willing to give up their life. Adultery and any other sin is really idol worshiping. So you don't think she can, instead of getting killed, all she has to do is give up the, the, the adulterous relation. She's not dying. If you tell somebody, don't commit adultery or I'll kill you. They would say, okay, don't kill me. I won't commit adultery. So what's happening over here is that the woman who's sinning, adultery or any other sin, would never commit worship idols. Why? He says like this. The heifer sheds, so maybe, but the question is, Maybe the word of the woman is, okay, I won't worship idol, but I commit adultery. 
He says, half is she'etzla, the difference by the woman, that she thinks, that a birth that she thinks, okay, adultery is not disconnecting from Hashem. I'm still connected to Hashem. But I don't wish I wouldn't do. He said, that's also foolish. To think, Dr. Rebbe says, that there's a difference in separation from Hashem, cutting the lifeline from Hashem. If it's adultery or idol worshiping, to think there's a difference is a roch shtus. That's foolish. It's folly. In other words, what is Al Rebbe saying over here? Anytime a person does any sin, no matter what it is, it's a total disconnect from Hashem. It doesn't matter what the sin is. Why does the person sin? Even a firm person, everybody sins. Why does a firm person sin? Because the firm person thinks, thinks, I'm still connected. Okay, so I didn't, this is not kosher so much. This is not Shabbos so much. What am I doing already? I'm not bowed down to an idol. I believe in God. I'll dive in, I'll do everything else. I believe in God. al Rebbe says, that is the Ruch Shtus. That is the foolish spirit that enters a person's mind, and that is the cause of all sins. So the question is, a Jew can come and say to God, okay, temporary insanity. You can't punish me for my sins because it's temporary insanity. The only problem is, in Torah law, temporary insanity doesn't work. It's not legitimized. It's not, a, it's a, not an excuse to get out If someone is told about of the uh, or their child would be killed or other human would be killed, it's still no, they would still not be allowed to bat onto the idol. Because that idol worshiping is but you're doing, you can't do a save a life by by bowing by not bowing down to an idol. Anyway, now the Rebbe is saying like this: any sin, even the, to make a differentiation between idolatry and adultery is also a foolish spirit. And the second line from the end of the page, the differentiation between adultery and, and idol worshiping is also a foolish spirit. That dresses in, meaning that impacts and influences the, the godly soul. All the way up to the highest level of the soul, chachma, but v'loyad v'chlal. Chachma of the, the essence of the Jew never becomes, uh, never becomes disconnected. In other words, the Ruach Shtus affects all the emotions, it affects thought, speech, and action, it affects the emotions, and it affects bin and das. Not chachma, chachma is bitl. Chachma, the Jew is still connected. But that's the power of the Ruach Shtus. The Ruach Shtus is convincing a person that you are not going to become disconnected. And therefore, the Alt Rebbe says in the top of 60, truthfully, even the, the lightest, most minor sin, the one who transgresses it, transgresses the will of Hashem, and like he said before, he was in, in with the ultimate separation, from the oneness of Hashem, more than the Sitrach and Elokim Achedim, Dalt Rebbe says, like he mentioned before, but now Dalt Rebbe is emphasizing another point. A person that does any sin, the, the most minor sin, is lower than the idols themselves, which would be idol worshiping. What causes it to happen? The Roshdos. So he says, a person is not supposed to be stupid. A person is not supposed to be foolish. If a person would realize what this is doing to him spiritually, 
he'll never come to sin. And that's why the Gemara says, Rish Lakish is one that said it. Ain Adam Ever Aveda Ella in Cain. And there's a rule when you say Ain Ella, it means there is no other way. There's no exception to the rule. The only way a person could sin, we talk about when he knows it's a sin, not ignorance. Ignorance is ignorance. A person who knows it's an Aveda to do, and they do it. It's only because of the, the foolish spirit that convinces them that they're still connected. But the reality is, any sin disconnects you, and which makes the person even worse than the worst evil, which is idol worship. Idols. They're worse than the idols. So he said, now the Rebbe is bringing out like this. If you realize that the sin is, is foolish. You know, like we said, a chacham sees the future. If a person is going to eat a food, okay, that's going to give him a stomach ache for a week. And he, the, he's going to eat it for 10 minutes. And he'll enjoy it for 10 minutes. And then he'll suffer for two, seven days. You have to be an idiot. You have to be a fool to eat that food. What do you think? 10 minutes now and suffer for, for, for a week? If a person thinks to himself, Dr. Rebbe is saying that any sin you do is idol worshiping. So you can't hold yourself back from the sin. The only reason you don't is be, because you became foolish. You became a shaita. Shtus. By the way, there's an interesting order from the Rebbe, one of the Basilaganis. Somebody asked the Rebbe, but how we find people that do worship idols? And you're saying the Ruach can cover the essence of the Neshama, but we find people that worship idols. And the Rebbe answered by those people, it's so bad that the Ruach Shtus, the fuller spirit, covers even the essence of the soul. But therefore, based on what the Rambam says, when the Rambam says, we learned many times, the Rambam in Hilchus Gittin says, I'll answer that question in a second. Um, when somebody does an Aveda, they, they sin. And they think for themselves, what am I gaining by it versus what I'm losing by it? So they won't come to sin. It's a foolishness on their part. Now, the Ruach Shtus is, the question is, is the Ruach Shtus an integral part of the animal soul and does everyone have it? The Gemara calls the Yetzirah Melech Zokin Uchsil, the old foolish king. Every Jew has the ability the ability to have the Ruch Shtus because that's what the Yetzirah does. What does the Yetzirah do to the person? The Yetzirah convinces the person why, what's the big deal if you sin? You're still connected. The Yetzirah is one big shaita, one big fool that wants to convince the person to sin. Now, if the person is intelligent and says, why should I sin? It's going to kill me then they wouldn't do it. Then they wouldn't sin. So the Yetzirah tries a different tactic and a different tactic. But it's all Ruach And sometimes, by the way, we we're mentioning this morning in a, in a Chassidus class in, in Shul, sometimes the Ruach could be dressed into holiness. Sometimes the, this foolish spirit of the Yetzirah to get you to sin could be cloaked even in Kedusha. And there's an Hayyim name that ever brings down that the whole story, and I think it was Mithra Rebbe said, now I never knew that the Yetzirah could be dressed in a Hasidic garb. To give you an example, the example I mentioned this morning. Aveda Zara, we mentioned, <clears throat> 
It doesn't say Aveda Salilam. Idol worshipping is Aveda Salilam. Okay, that's the real definition of idol worshipping. Alilam are idols. Aveda Zada means foreign. Any Aveda, anything which is foreign for the Jew at that moment is coming from the Yet Sahara. For instance, a person comes into Sholait. Okay. They decide, oh, before davening, I want to learn a mimer. I want to learn a Hasidic discourse. The problem is now is the time to daven. So the Yetzirah will come to the person and say to the person, you have to learn before davening. To learn a mimer. Don't daven with the minion. Learn the mimer. Where's that coming from? Bottom line is, Taylor says right now you need to daven. Now you want to go learn? Get up early and go learn. You didn't get up early. So that was one thing you did wrong. Now the HR wants to get you not to daven with the minion. So what does he do? He cloaks it. He's not going to tell you, don't go to show you're from Jew. <clears throat> the HR will come to you and say, no, you can't daven. You have to go learn now. Seemingly, it's not a bad thing. The problem is, it's Aveda Zara. <clears throat> right now, this is not the Aveda of the Jew. Right now, the Aveda is davening. <clears throat> when you're learning, the, the, you have to learn. Anything in Kedusha foreign to that is Aveda Zara. So the Eight Zahara is so smart, <clears throat> so shrewd, that he'll convince you with holiness to sin. But the holiness is not holy because it's against what you're supposed to be doing now. And that's what Aveda Zara means, a foreign work. Something which is foreign to you at that moment. <clears throat> and so therefore, the Altareb is saying like this. The person that sins, any Aveda, he says even the minor Aveda, <clears throat> is worse, the person who transgresses it, is worse than the animals, the trait for things, even worse than the idols. And he says, um, the Yaisen, he's even worse from all the dvarm, all the things that get their sustenance from evil. Like he says, behemoth tmeis, the non-kosher animals, if you eat them, chayis ve'ephis tmeim, the non-kosher birds and beasts, the shkatsim and the mashim, or kemaim, like the Gemara says, yitosh yitosh kedamach. Gemara says like this: <clears throat> If a person will ever become haughty, Gemara says, don't think you're so haughty. Even the the lowest bugs, yitosh, and the Alter will explain what's the unique evil of this yitosh. It's translated in the English as a gnat or a mosquito, different interpretations. The lowest creature in the world of evil is this Yitush. What does the Gemara say is unique about the Yitush? Yitush is the only animal that's machnis the ena meitzi. He takes in food and doesn't even give out waste. It doesn't go to the bathroom. Kedusha is unity, sharing. Evil is all for me. That's the difference between Kedusha. Holiness is bittal, sharing, unity, giving of one another, of oneself to another and vice versa. Evil is, it's all about me. That's Klippa, no bittal. The worst level of evil the Gemara gives in this, an example is this bug yitush that is so selfish. It doesn't even share waste. It doesn't even go to the bathroom, which means it's totally about me. And the Gemara says that a Jew that sins is worse even than the yitush kadamach. The yitush was created before you in creation. Other issue was created less. Even the lowest level of bugs 
that is so bad, it's so self-centered that even waste it doesn't give out, is greater than the Jew who doesn't have Veda. Now this is not, Galtrebbe's intent is not to make a person depressed. What Galtrebbe is explaining over here, when you understand that, that will help a person not wanting to sin. If you really feel what you, just like in Kedusha, when you do a mitzvah, that I've explained in the last number of chapters, you connect to the essence of Hashem. So therefore, when you do a sin, you disconnect from God entirely like idol worship. To the extent you're even lower than the lowest of the lowest bugs. So what is Alter Abba telling us this for? A person should understand, then don't sin. It's not worth it. Just picture it like this. There's physical suicide and there's spiritual suicide. Which one's worse? Spiritual suicide is much, much worse than, than physical suicide. Why? A person anyway lives only a hundred years. It's not eternal. There's no, there's no thing as eternal life, now at least, until Mashiach comes. There's no eternity in life. So anyway, it's a temporary life. Okay, so physical suicide means you die earlier. But it's not an eternal, talk about physically. It's not an eternal death. Spiritual suicide, you are cutting yourself off spiritually from the source of everything, which is Hashem. That's permanent. Until you do tshuva, and this is what's so lucky that we have the ability to do tshuva, to undo it. But the reality is, until a person does tshuva, they're disconnected. Until they redo tshuva for what they did, they're disconnected. And that's terrible. So the purpose of what the Rebbe is saying is, and he says, even why? Because after even the, this gnat, the mosquito, that only takes in, doesn't even give out. It's the lowest of lowest klipa. Very far away from Kedusha. That sustains this evil to the lowest level. Kedemis li shachete is still greater than the person who sins. Can you imagine? The worst bug in the world that has no giving. We're talking about when a person knows they're sinning and they sin. Even accidental sins, we're not going to get into that now. It's like, but even accidental sins is also, so this works. I mentioned it briefly because an animal that's healthy, does not jump into a fire even accidentally. The fact that a person can sin, if somebody reminds me next week, I'll elaborate on it before we start. A person who sins accidentally, the fact that he was able to sin accidentally shows he has a connection to that level of evil, and therefore you have to bring a sacrifice, you have to do tshuva. I was accidental. Why do I have to bring a sacrifice and do tshuva? Because the fact that you sinned, even though it was accidental, shows you have a connection to that level of evil. And for that, you need to do tshuva. Okay, everybody have a great Shabbos. It's a Shem Monday night, 8 o'clock. Um, Chumash, Parsha class. Tell come and tell your friends about it. And by the way, um, I was just, if, if you look on the screen by the chats, if you're interested, one second. She put um, one second. Shoshana Chaya put the um, if you want to listen to any of the shiurim on YouTube you have to go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Beverly Hill BH Chabad and then you can go into any one of the YouTube classes Anyway, everybody have a great Shabbos.